to me, Khadija is easily one of the most beautiful women I have ever laid eyes on. She is so elegant, glamorous, and just fabulous. Her long neck, chiseled bone structure, sun-kissed skin, and legs longer than a gazelle. You would be insane to not see just how stunning this woman is. With one of the most sophisticated walks on the runway, she really had the physique of a mannequin. There's just something about the 80s and 90s black models that does it for me, right? They had this certain je ne sais quoi about them. Khadija Adam Ismail was a beauty queen turned supermodel. She was the first black woman to have a fragrance named after her titled Khadija. She appeared on the cover of Cosmopolitan and many other magazines during her travels around the world, and she traveled the world, literally. She was crowned Miss Kenya 1984, almost 30 years ago. She then flew to London to compete in the Miss World 1984 pageant and was one of the 15 semi-finalists. Khadija was also crowned Continental Queen of Africa, a title so fitting, right? A special title which gave her a trophy, plus, of course, the bragging rights. There's not much information out there about her as she lived a very private life and she was focused heavily on just getting the work done. Okay, I scoured the universe for every bit of information I could find on this beauty because I think she deserves her flowers from this generation too, okay? But like I said, there's not much. I couldn't even find a birthday for her. Just the year that she was born. TikTok has been reviving the interest surrounding the 90s and 80s models with edits and tributes to some of the most prolific and iconic women. And Khadijah Adams has many edits on TikTok from fans and so many seem hungry for more. And I've seen a lot of articles from WordPress, etc., where people are just like, we want to know more. What happened to her? Where is she now? What's going on? Hopefully she could make a resurgence and we can know a little bit more, right? This makes me so happy though, because she does deserve all of this attention. A lot of women, especially women of color that didn't get their flowers during their time are now getting them with new interests because it's easy to find like beauty secrets and childhood facts and the whole biography and lineage of a lot of the white supermodels of that era, but you don't find anything of the black models because no one was really interviewing them. No one was really giving them their shine, their flowers, or putting them at the forefront or giving them, you know, the same shine as their counterparts. And it sucks unless they were like super scandalous or they, you know, was attention seeking and stuff like that. You wouldn't really hear much about these models. People just weren't really interested. And it's a shame because I think they were some of the most gorgeous, you know, models of that era and full of class and elegance and swagger. You know what I mean? I would have loved to know what her beauty secret is, how she kept her skin so flawless, what she ate and stuff like that. But it's so rare to find those information about these beauty icons and models, you know, even from the golden age of Hollywood, whenever I do a black actress, vintage glamour queen, you won't find information about her. Uh, about them like that out there. It's really sad. But like I said, this makes me happy that Khadijah Adams is getting this type of attention. She really deserves it. She reminds me a lot of Iman, which I did a video for. And she has the grace and elegance of Katusha, which I did a video for Katusha also. And you guys know how close and near and dear to my heart Katusha is. And in today's video, we are going to give a little background on the Queen of Africa. I also want you guys to please leave a flower or a crown emoji in the comments for our girl as we get into this video, okay? But first, hey friend, welcome to my channel, Korean Allude, where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars through history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so. And if you're already subscribed, please turn on your notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now, without further ado, let's get into this video. Now, let's get into the bio of what we know. Like I said, I don't have a birthday for her, but Adams was among the first 15 semifinalists from 72 beauty queens around the world who became the first Kenyan to win the Miss Africa title and with it, 275 free airline tickets to tour Mother Earth. But here's the full story. Born and brought up in Nairi, her civil service father passed away when she was very young. She is believed to be a Somali born to a, forgive me for mispronouncing, if I do, Kikuyo mother. She was born in Nairi where her father was a civil servant. Some say she is from a Swahili background, but we don't know, right? But growing up under the watch of her mother, Halima, did not deter her from impressing the judges on the catwalk one evening in November 1984. Khadija's face has graced the world-renowned Cosmopolitan and Time magazines in 1987 and 1989, respectively. A feat 
any model would yearn for today. Described as too radical and opinionated by judges at the Miss World pageant in 1984, Khadija's spirit to go against the grain is still intact. During her time in the limelight of beauty, she had the privilege of enjoying 275 tickets a year to various destinations around the world since 1986. Do you guys hear what I said? Imagine every year for 10 years, you get 275 free airline tickets, first class, darling, to anywhere. Oh, I would die. I would be trying. You guys would not see me anywhere, okay? <laughs> she modeled across the continent, mostly between Japan, Italy, New York, and Los Angeles before settling in London. She said, and I quote, I have dared to dream many times. I have enjoyed wide travel and luxury, and I do not for a moment regret getting into modeling, she says. Soon after her appearance at the Miss World, she caught the eye of model agents, photographers, and the world's top fashion designers, becoming one of the most sought after models during the late 80s and early 90s. Khadija went on to model in Milan, Paris, New York, eventually landing the cover of Cosmopolitan on October 1986. Also, about the same time, she began doing all the top runway shows in Milan and Paris, eventually becoming the muse for the one and only Yves Saint Laurent. And Yves Saint Laurent loved him a chocolate girl, okay? <laughs> Most of his muses were either from Somali or Kenya or all over the world. He really he really put a lot of people on and we commend him for that because it was an era where they weren't really getting their shine, but he really gave these women their flowers, okay? We commend him for that today. That's why he's one of my favorite brands. Saint Laurent always and who in fact was so moved by the stunning exotic beauty that he created an entire haute couture collection based on her. So she had a perfume named after her. She had a haute couture collection based on her. And in addition, Khadija also landed a very lucrative makeup contract with Yves Saint Laurent's Cosmetics in 1986. It was worth a million dollars, which she received over the years. It was the first time a black woman was the face of a makeup line, and it went by her name, Khadija. Khadija continued to model until the early 90s for various other designers, as well as doing countless editorial shoots, eventually leaving the model spotlight. Now, in terms of where she is now, there's only one updated article I could find on her whereabouts um, from TMC.net, and it reads, even with such privileges, beauty did not get into Khadija's head. And in 2004, she was one of the diaspora Kenyans who returned home to build a country at the invitation of the government. At the time, she was living in London. She came back home and immediately hung up her beauty gown, broke new ground in the intriguing and male-dominated mining sector in northeastern Kenya. In 2005, she founded Madadier Investment Ltd., which is a company that mines gypsum near River Tana. Gypsum is a mineral hydrated calcium sulfate and is a raw material for making cement. Her main theater of operation is Boratana in Bengali and Tana River County and colleagues in the industry call her the gypsum queen of the desert. And again, I ask you guys, please forgive me if I mispronounce any name of the countries. Just correct me in the comments. At the moment, I have more than 30 permanent employees, she said, but I have more on casual basis. She has literally found her way into the lucrative business that is worth several millions of shillings. Talk about businesswomen, right? Bottlenecks came her way early in life. She said, I refused to bribe anyone to get the mining license, so it took me a whole year, yet some people were getting it in a month after partying with money says Khadija. Apart from cultural inhibitions where some elders thought mining was in a woman's type of job, Khadija has faced threats and on some occasions her life has been endangered. She said, I have had a gun stuck on my face. Some cartels never thought a woman should be in this kind of work, she says. A woman who seems to have so many things on her hands. Khadija was struggling to make a life out of what she earned from modeling after the years. So she went into mining, which now she is very successful at. She is such a business savvy woman that she confesses that the business has put her on her toes such that you will not find her in bed after 4 a.m. She says, I have to sort out so many things in a day that I wish the day Day was actually longer. It is rare that I get home before 8 p.m., says Khadija, who a close friend describes as hyperactive and who now lives in Nairobi. She outsources her transport 
She said, I have to manage the fleets and I often find I have lost myself in the job. At the time, she was married to Jonathan Reed, an investment banker in the United Kingdom. There is money in modeling, only that many models fail to create something out of themselves for future life apart from the personal endowments. They must study and broaden their horizons. They must identify as someone they can grow up with, not someone to be a handbag or yoke around their neck, she says as a parting shot. Like I said, we don't have a birthday for Khadijah. We don't know if she has any children, etc. You know, she appears to be very business minded and success driven and is thriving in the business world. I doubt she likes too much attention because there isn't much out there about her. And the fact that she went into mining, which is like a tough business, which is a tough business, whether you're a man or not, let alone, you know, a woman, like she said, she's almost getting into trouble all the time from bullies that don't think she deserves to be in this position is just so inspirational talk about beauty and brains i would love to know about her whereabouts i love inspirational stories like this because oftentimes in the media the stars that we see the icons that we see are just not really great role models but she just appears to be such a great role model and we need more people like that okay so i'm going to leave a tribute of some of her most iconic looks in the end so stay tuned so you can continue to see some of these looks comment below a flower or a crown emoji for her comment also below who else would you guys like me do a video for next and if you like the music you're listening to the link is in the description i love you guys so much thank you for tuning in until next time